All right, in this video, we're going to discuss how to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. And I think that you'll find it to be very similar to a chi-squared test for homogeneity that I discussed in the previous video. Uh, the main difference being here that instead of every group having um, a, a even distribution, that there can be um, you know a preset distribution that we kind of need to test whether or not um, you know, this data is fitting that preset, okay? So let's go ahead and read through this example. So usually, 25% of students get an A, 45% get a B, 20 get a C, 5 get a D, 5 get an F, okay? So last year, the teacher tried several new interactive activities in an attempt to improve grades, okay? Uh, below are, are the number of students with each letter grade last year. Um, and what we want to know is, has the distribution changed with the new interactive activities? Okay, and it's important to note here that we are not going to test uh, whether or not the grades have improved, okay? So rather, uh, what a chi-squared goodness of test fit test does uh, test for us is HO, the null hypothesis, is going to be um, that this distribution has um, not changed, right? So um, the distribution of grades uh, has not changed. Remember, your null hypothesis is always the nothing's happened here, you know, type hypothesis. Then your alternative hypothesis, H1 or HA, this is always your, oh, look here, something interesting has happened. Uh, so this one is going to be that the distribution of grades has changed. Okay. Okay. If I can spell correctly. There we go. All right. Um, so actually, let me take this and I'm just going to move it over to the side because I want this space here underneath here. Okay, so to test this hypothesis, um, first thing I want to do is uh, figure out the expected number of A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's if this uh, 25, 45%, all this, etc. would 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 have happened, okay? So, um, this is my observed number of students, right? Uh, let's go ahead and first thing, let's calculate the total, okay? How many students do I have right here? So type in equals sum, open parentheses, okay? Click on your data, scroll it over, close those parentheses, and then press enter, okay? So this is my total. So let's figure out what my expected, expected number of students that would have gotten an A. Okay, so there's 22 students. If 25% of them get an A, type in equals, okay, 0.25, right? That's the 25% that get an A, times 22, right? So the percentage that gets an A times the total. Type in equals, get 0.5.5. .5. So 25% of 22 is 5.5. .5. And it doesn't matter, it's a decimal. I know that there can't be half of a student. But this is our expected, or basically on average, uh, when I have 22 students, I expect that I'll, on 5.5 .5 of them will have an A. Okay. Now let's do the same thing with the B. So B is 45%. So 0.45 times 22. Okay, C equals 0.20, okay, 20% times 0.22, or 22, type in equals, equals D, 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 5%. Careful, that's not 0.5, that's 0 0.05, 5% times 22. Enter. And then lastly, F. 0 0.05, that's 5% get an F, times 22, okay? And if you total those up, if you add them up, you should double check that you should also get 22, right? Your total shouldn't change with the expected, okay? Okay, so now we have the, the our actual observed and our expected. 
Uh, now running this test is very similar to the chi-squared test for homogeneity. I can calculate my p-value directly um, by just typing in equals chi sq dot test open parentheses. All right, our actual value. So click and hold. Okay, then write a comma and then click and hold your expected. Okay, so our actual, oops, delete that. Okay, before I click anywhere else, close those parentheses and press enter. All right, very good. So now if I had an alpha level, say my alpha was 0 0.05, right? My, ex my acceptable type one error is 0 0.05 then with this p-value being less than alpha, I would conclude that I'm going to basically reject this null hypothesis, right? I'm gonna reject it, and then I'm gonna say, okay, yeah, there's evidence that this distribution of grades has changed, All right? This distribution of grades has changed. Now, like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that this activity improved the grades, right? It's just that this distribution of grades is different than this distribution of grades, right? There's evidence that suggests that the grade distribution has changed. Okay. Um, now, if you wanted to do a test statistic, you wanted to figure out a test statistic, you can do it, right? Uh, you didn't need to, because there's your p-value right away, but if your teacher asks you what's your test statistic, how do you figure it out? What we need to calculate is the observed minus the expected, the observed minus the expected, squared, divided by the expected. Okay, and you would do that for all of these observations here. Uh, so we would type in equals, okay, open a parenthesis, and then just use the formula so that way you don't have to type it out every time. So the observed is 10 minus the expected, which is 5.5, close that parentheses and square it, divided by the expected. Okay, so you notice what I've done. I just clicked on these cells, right? So B6 is the observed, minus B7, which is the expected, squared, divided by the expected. Press enter, okay? And then take your cursor and make sure you get that nice green square around it, and then and then get your cursor to look like this nice uh, black cross. And then click, drag to the side, and it'll calculate this formula for you for every, um, for every grade. Okay. Okay. Then your test statistic is going to be equal the sum of all of these observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Okay. Close parentheses. Okay, so I've summed, sum up all these observations here, press enter, and there's my test statistic. So I can calculate my p-value, p-value using the chi squared distribution dot right tail. Okay, so chisq dot dist dot rt, open parentheses, my test statistic, and the degrees of freedom is the number of observations you have minus one. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and the number of groups that you have minus one, I guess. So I have five groups, minus one would be four. Okay, close parentheses, and there we go. So you see, I could have done my um, p-value using my test statistic, or you can just go directly to your um, chi test. Right, so if you type in chi squared dot test, it'll give you right your p-value, or you could have done your test statistic and then gotten your p-value using the chi squared distribution. Either way, you'll get the same answer. Okay.